In this video, we're going to have a look at some of the new things that came out as part of Power BI's July 2025 feature update, including things like improvements to the Copilot features, an optional order by functions for visual parameters, and organizational themes. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's jump in. So let's start with the Power BI reporting services, the PBIRS, which will now be the default on-premises reporting solution for SQL Server editions. So if you're still using SSRS, you need to start planning your migration into using the PBIRS because there are no more new versions of SSRS that will be released from here onwards. There are some documentations regarding the migration path, which you can refer to in the Microsoft website. And it seems that the current SSRS version will be supported until January 2033, which will give you plenty of time to plan your migration. In my experience, though, the PBIRS authoring experience is almost like for like with the SSRS authoring experience. And SSRS is actually the reporting tool that I used many years ago, well before I switched to Power BI. So at the very least, from the authoring experience perspective, it won't be too different. There are lots of new improvements with the Copilot feature in Power BI. They've added an option to limit the Copilot search to only those that are prepped content. And you can do this from the admin settings. Basically, if you didn't mark any contents like tables, columns, or measures as prepped for AI, it won't show up in the standalone Copilot experience, which is actually a great way to exclude any data that is either in test incomplete or irrelevant from Copilot analysis. Verified answers can now be configured by creators. These are basically curated questions that roughly match your prompt. These can help with the more commonly asked questions that creators already know users typically ask for. The AI data schema has also been updated. There is now a search box that lets you find specific fields and items, which is helpful if you have large models. The fields now also show visibility indicators if they are hidden in your semantic model or in your report. This helps you identify if a field is used for internal purposes, which are usually those that are hidden and probably should be excluded from your Copilot uh, data schema. A navigation menu for Power BI in Teams is now available. This navigation bar is typically what you see when you open Power BI on the service or on the web. And it's a great way to keep the experiences consistent, even if you are accessing it from Teams. You can now influence the sorting order for visual calculations using the optional order by function. An example that they've given here is a Pareto chart, which is a type of chart that requires categories shown in descending order from the total. And the order by function allows you to influence the sort order of these fairly easily. It's an optional parameter that you can include as part of your visual calculation functions. And they mention a handful of these functions like running sum, moving average, and previews. And it probably works for other functions as well. So go check it out yourself if you haven't yet. Field parameters are now generally available. Again, it's another feature that I've been using for years now and is only now getting out of preview. It received a small update, which preserves the expansion states when you switch parameters. They gave an example here, which is a matrix table showing accessories expanded into classes, which is the field parameter currently selected. When you select a different field parameter like color, this switches the product into colors, but retains the expansion state on accessories, which previously, if you did it, it would normally reset all of the expansion and collapsions in your visuals. Organizational themes are now available, which allows you to create and distribute company-wide themes across your organization. And we've already covered JSON themes in another video. And if you don't know, it's basically a way to create sort of visual presets for your reports. And it's a great way to speed up your development and ensure that your reports have a standardized look and feel. Tenant admins can now create themes for organizations. In this example, they show that you can have multiple themes like a core themes visual or dark mode. 
and all of it can be customized to your own company's branding. Now, when your users open a Power BI report from the service or desktop, it will automatically give them options to use these organizational themes. Another key thing here is this Copilot toggle, which basically ensures that visuals generated by Copilot uses these themes, making this experience feel more personalized to your organization. I'm a big fan of themes and standardization, and I think this just makes it easier for businesses to ensure that reports look and feel the same. I can see this useful, especially if you have multiple developers. It will make them easy to use the same themes and even distribute changes to these themes across your business. So definitely this is something that I'll be using in my own tenant. Pie charts and donut charts received an update after what feels like a million years. You can now apply settings like adjusting borders, transparency, and applying settings to individual slices. These settings are very similar to the recent updates that they made to the other visuals like the bars or column charts. On the Power BI service side, they've added a way to quickly switch between DAX query view and model view. You'll find this at the bottom of your page if you open any published semantic models in the Power BI service. The Power BI app has been reorganized, so you'll see that the recent and frequently opened items are now combined to show on top and favorites are shown next, which makes sense because you typically want a way to quickly access items that you favorited. The menu buttons have also been slightly reorganized. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I only really cover the ones that were pretty interesting to me in the monthly updates. So if you want to read everything that came out as part of this month's update, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below so you can read it for yourself. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so that it'll be better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at any of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.